Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to News Jump, and uh, it appears as though G4 TV is back, baby. Yeah. Uh, are you excited? I don't know what to think. Yeah. But hey, we're bringing that shit back. It's coming it's, back. It's because we did the that uh, Attack of the Tugs episode like it's five true. years ago. Mm -hmm. and everyone... We made fun of them so hard that they had to come back. We have to have the last word. Yeah. Uh, yes, G4, the defunct gaming-centric channel and network that dominated the lives of millennials everywhere during the early to mid-2000s with shows like X-Play, Web Soup, Judgment Day, and Attack of the Show. Apparently, it's returning in some yet-to-be-determined form on a yet-to-be-disclosed date in 2021. Yeah, we pretty much know nothing. Yeah, on Friday morning of this week, people were, I mean, justifiably surprised to find a trailer uploaded to various Twitter accounts associated with the previously defunct brand, which was then followed up by retweets from prominent people who had worked on or behind the scenes of the network. Some very confused. Yeah. Uh, the trailer included a few inside jokes from the network's heyday, and it finally ended with, Incoming transition. We never stopped playing. And yeah, guess what? That's literally all the information that's out there right now. But it's coming back, Elliot. G4 and, is coming back. Is it coming e to TV? Everyone I don't is know. so excited. Is it streaming? Like, we know nothing. We know nothing. My favorite part about announcements like this is that just the announcement will get way more press and reaction and happiness from people than the actual product. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like a video game in that sense. Yeah, it's, uh, this is, you know. This is like the worst year in recent memory, and you know what people love? Nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. I just want to feel good. Even though their nostalgia can never live up to yeah. what's already in their heads. You want a new Duke Nukem game? No, but I like the idea of a new Duke ah, Nukem Duke game. Duke Nukem. Wait, this sucks. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> well, yeah. I can draw a penis. <laughs> Even people who worked on shows back in the day on G4 seemingly either have no idea what's going on, or they're being tight-lipped on purpose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Off to speculation land for us. Yes. Here's what we think is going on. Like I just said, people love nostalgia. Everyone knows that. And gaming is as big as it's ever been within the landscape of entertainment. Easily dwarfing the amount of potential viewers searching for gaming-based content back in the 2000s. Plus, it's only been just over a decade since the height of the G4 network's popularity. And surprisingly, only seven years since the channel was officially shuttered. Feels like a lot longer than that. Well, they can't do cops anymore. So they're going to really have to dig deep and bring back some old shows. Yeah, I, I guess I remember like one of the first Comic Cons I went to, like 2013, was the last G4 Comic Con. And they had like, like, they basically built their own like structure, just yeah. this massive structure. And The uh, final hurrah. Yeah, someone at, someone at Comcast or NBC Universal was probably like, that cost you how much? Wow, we're never Whoa, doing wait, that we again. We should cancel this channel. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so many of the hosts that you know and love... Uh, some that we know yeah. are still very active in that general space and might be willing to be a part of this kind of revival. Yeah, it's not like they're in their 70s. It's only been seven years. Yeah, I can see like Kevin Pereira maybe being down. I feel like I feel like he's behind the whole thing because he was promoting it before the actual trailer went out yeah. and then did a bunch of cryptic tweets and, and Kevin's it. been like very active on the like behind the scenes production side of things on yeah. various projects for years now. On the other hand, I think both hosts of X Play have pretty much sworn off like mm. entertainment media of mm. all kinds. I know uh, that's why this that is why this is so exciting, Elliot. Now uh, here's the rub. <laughs> on the on the other hand, because gaming has done nothing but grow exponentially over the past twenty years, so has the amount of gaming related content. It's a very very big understatement to say that there is no shortage of options for people who want to consume some video game media these days. You can watch your favorite players, commentators, comedians, musicians, artists, and whoever else live on Twitch whenever you want. A, a big influencer can flip on a webcam and get better ratings than any yeah. show on cable. You could also watch at least a billion hours of video games, reviews, commentary, discussion, or debate around gaming right here on YouTube. There's also a nonstop flow of competitive gaming happening day in, day out in the flourishing world of esports, which was, by the way, still barely in its infancy during the years of G4. Yeah. So this announcement seems as though it's coming at the best and the worst time for a reboot. Yeah. And not saying there isn't an audience for it. There absolutely is. But it'll just be a bit harder for them to produce the ratings needed to survive on a network now more than it was back then when they were the only outlet doing it. 
until Machinima came along. Yeah, and took a bunch of the G4 people with Exactly. Them. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, uh, the, t- the period of time when I watched a lot of G4 was, like, my, like, junior year of college, mm-hmm. like, 2006, 2007. And, yeah, at that time, it's, like, YouTube, no one was uploading gaming shit to YouTube because there yeah. was, like, l- severe limits on It was content. just videos of people at the zoo. Uh, video game live streaming was basically oh. non-existent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, G4 kind of had a monopoly on just the concept of like gaming content, and, and that is the op- that is could not be further from what we are at right now. People did watch it too. It launched the careers of a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah. But speaking of networks, is that where the new G four is going to end up on a, a cable TV network like last time? Because if that's the case, <laughs> uh, <laughs> rip. Well, we don't know. But at this point, all signs are pointing to a live but online model for distribution. And based on our own assumptions, along with the not-so-secret ownership of the G4 brand, uh, we think it's pretty safe to assume that whatever this new iteration of G4 TV actually is, it will be landing on NBC's stupidly named Peacock streaming service. Why? Well, as we mentioned literally seconds ago, as far as anyone knows, NBC, Universal, Comcast, whatever the fuck the parent company refers to itself as, still owns the right to G4. Yes, they do. They've got the new streaming service, and... uh, it's not doing great. On it's a, not doing launch. great. Also, like a bunch of their launch titles literally were gone within like 48 hours. They're mm-hmm. just like, all right, yeah, we've got this and it's gone. Yeah, we got the signups. Thanks. Uh, but they do have a live TV component, which could be used for this. And mm. we'll, we'll get into it. But to take things a step further into weird, seemingly nepotistic territory, according to the world's number one esports consultant slash insider, competitive gaming leader, and internet culture savant, Rod Slasher Breslau, G4 TV is making a comeback from Comcast, who still own the property. Led by Spectacore gaming president Tucker Roberts, who oversees Comcast's esports organizations T1, T1 LOL, and the Philadelphia Fusion Overwatch League team. Uh, Tucker is also the son of Comcast CEO Brian Roberts. Dad! Dad, I want to bring back G4. I'm sure he's nicer than All right, that, son. But, but Dad, uh, you don't understand, Dad. Gaming is so big. Well, he is 30, so it make, he's like the perfect demographic for G4 in its heyday. Yeah. So he was up one night. I could own this network. You know what? <laughs> I think it's time. I think it's I think it's time to bring back G4 TV, baby. I've never met the guy. I have no idea what he's I, like. I, I, this is how I picture him in my head. I don't want to see him. Any CEO, hear. I do. I do. A thirty-year-old executive is doing a lot of blow. Is what I'm saying. Allegedly. The, yeah. If I think of a thirty-year-old <laughs> CEO whose father owns an entire network. That is what comes to mind. Yeah. The same type of people at high school were like, yeah, fuck you, my dad owns a dealership. I'll yeah. kick your ass. Yeah. Uh, anyways, taking things a step further, but I mean, kind of walking into TMZ levels of theorizing here, is the fact that uh, Roberts, the young CEO, he's also dating Olivia Munn, who, mm. uh, as you're all aware, was a co-host on Attack of the Show during some of the highest rated seasons. But all, all that means is that there's at least some chance that she might return because he could just be like, hey, you want to do this? Babe. I mean, you're in the same room as me. Hey, babe. Uh, Mun, uh, for her part, has tweeted her ap- approval of the relaunch, at least alluding to the fact that she might be involved. Very nice person. We built uh, uh, gingerbread houses with her. She's fun. Yeah, she's yeah. a nice lady. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure her day rate... Probably very high. Probably a bit higher than it was back then. I mean, we know a lot of people who worked at G4 at its peak, and... They all describe it as this place that was run on a fucking shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. There's never enough money or resources. And it still managed to run out of money. So, like, this is very dubious (laughs) for me. I just don't see how this works. Yeah. 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 I mean, people, when you're watching us, you know that we kind of have a kind of a deep-seated animosity towards big network TV stuff because they promise the world and deliver very little Mm -hmm. to the creators. So we're always a bit standoffish when it comes to things like this or things like Venn or things like Quibi. Mm -hmm. And typically, we end up being justified in our, you know, hesitance. Yeah. But again, hey, there's a lot of good here when it comes to digital creators getting paid again. Because as we all know, this entire industry has just been had had like all of the legs kicked out from under it before the coronavirus. Yeah. So we're always happy to see people getting work. I and mean, it is it is an interesting time because uh, like the only shows that are in production are 
Shows uh, that can be done by like with like one or two people yeah, in the room my, and gaming. Is... My wife is uh, one of the talking heads on a uh, travel channel, mm-hmm. uh, like ghost show, mm-hmm. and uh, she's been. The, their schedule never stopped. They just they just mailed over a fucking ring light. And they're like, all right, here you go, get back to work. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's entirely possible that this this might be the perfect time for something like G4 yeah. to come back. But anyways, back to the Comcast thing. Yeah. So it seems like we're on the the same page as pretty much everyone else who's speculating on this whole thing. Uh, Peacock will probably be the place to watch whatever this new G4 is, and it appears as though Peacock already has a live TV aspect built into it. So this could mean. They would potentially debut new episodes of Attack of the Show, X Play, or whatever new properties they develop at a certain point. Like, you know, live shows like traditional cable TV, but on the internet. Yeah, it's such a weird concept. It's almost like you're watching it right now if you're watching our premiere, and then it'll yeah. be a VOD afterwards. Um, but yeah, but you know, screen it live and then immediately make them on demand following their premiere, like. What we do here on YouTube. There's always stealing stuff from us. Yeah, <laughs> it's all these companies. Um, it is funny timing. For all this, though, because as most of you are aware, the G4 announcement comes just a little less than two weeks before the much-awaited, highly ambitious launch of VET, yeah. which uh, many have viewed as a brand new, non-connected version of what G4 used to be. Yeah, when I saw the first trailer, I was like, oh, they're redoing G4 yeah. but as a digital first the company. S- the same vibe, the same aesthetic. The same shows, same, except with different names. Same target audience, yeah. yeah. Uh, Venn will have the upper hand, though, as far as being the first out of the gate, thanks to their beta launch on August 5th. Beta! And uh, their content, <laughs> as Elliot just said, very familiar uh, to what would have been on G4 back in the day, or you might see in a future version of G4. Yeah, the thing about Venn, though, is uh, from what I understand, it's going to be like simultaneously streaming on like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Like, yeah, they're using they're using a uh, their own version of Restream. Yeah, <laughs> basically, just, like, it goes out to every platform. But that that means like it has the potential at least for eyes to be on it. Whereas like something yeah, on Pe- yeah. like Peacock, maybe a year from now Peacock will be doing great, but it's going to be dominating, baby. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, it it their deployment strategy is sound. Yeah. Whether or not people watch it is yeah, that remains to be to, yes. to be seen. Correct. Now the disadvantage with Venn versus G4, simply name recognition. Nobody knows what the hell Venn is outside of the people who follow its recently announced talent lineup uh, or you know whatever. I mean, the the recently announced talent lineup though features a good a lot of our friends. Yeah. And they're great people, and to them we say exactly what we said the last time that we covered Venn. Secure that bag. Enjoy the ride. Just don't count on Venn being something that uh, you are in until you retire. Yeah, I think I think everyone involved. They probably they get it by now. Yeah, you guys get it. <laughs> the Look. digital media space has been just absolutely slaughtered over the past. That's like, three why years. I'm so <laughs> happy about yeah. these things. I mean, I, I, from a critical viewpoint, no, this probably isn't going to work. Yeah. But from a viewpoint of I like watching all of my friends make money yeah. in the industry that uh, they've been have jobs. trying to, 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 to survive yeah. in for years. I, I think this is awesome. I like uh, my friends and acquaintances and people in... Just uh, fleecing all these... I, I like them being able to continue living in Los Angeles and New York City. Yeah, I want to be near them. <laughs> so anytime something like this comes around, yes, fleece, fleece this venture yeah. capital money. Yeah, get that bag. Listen, we're very proud of you. Take this time, use the company money, and continue to build your audience so that they follow you wherever you go in the future. Because if you do it right, it works. I mean, we are still doing shows. So, and we were, you know, being paid by Machinima to yeah. build our own audience there and yeah. take it away. I go down to the the cemetery and I shout that at Machinima's gravestone every week. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm still here, bitch. <laughs> Look at you. And then I piss on it. You're and dance fucking around. dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey. Woo. Still, the G4 announcement, it does seem like a shot across the bow of Ven. <laughs> it sure does. Uh, crazy timing. Either way, we all win because it's just more stuff to watch if you're into that kind of highly produced type of gamer content. Yeah. Uh, again, not shitting on either of these. We have a lot of friends who will be working on both, probably. So we're just happy to see more jobs and attention coming to digital creators as opposed to established actors like that. John Krasinski, sto- <laughs> Stolen Valor John Krasinski. 
stay the hell out of my territory. And that damn Chrissy Teigen, stay yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, get the fuck out. Let of Let the influ. Let the let the young get blood. off my lawn, yeah. office gym. Let the digital people that have been clawing their way through terrible experiments yeah. finally secure a bag. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good that yeah, we're happy for our friends. Yeah. And other people that are looking towards this career path and saying, well, I did think it was hopeless, but. Thanks to the person who owns the Rams throwing $18 million at a company called Venn, I too can have an editing job for a couple of years. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to another part of the show that has become a recurring event. No, not Quibi. Not, Quibi, oh. not this time. We're talking about movies that have been delayed because of the global motherfucking pandemic. The first day of the whole Comic Con at home thing, which I also have an issue with, that speaking of uh, like Venn bringing everything to one place, place through different platforms. I don't know where the hell all this Comic-Con at home shit is. It's like on everyone's individual channels for all the brands and oh. they upload it later to the Comic-Con page. Is there like a hub website or something? I don't know and honestly I don't care enough to look. Someone when E3 was happening, someone made a really good website for like actually aggregating all of it. Some the same thing for those virtual raves. There's like a virtual yeah. rave website that shows everything and has links of what's happening. Yeah. Anyways, the first day of the whole Comic-Con at home event, it seemed to just be one gigantic bummer for everyone who sauntered over to their computers, laptops, phones, or whatever, expecting something from the world of entertainment that would you know, just take their minds off the real world for a few minutes. Basically, as we've said a million times by now, 2020 ain't fucking happening. Forget about it. At least not for anything that requires people to be smashed together in large masses, except for school, of course. You guys, you guys gotta go to school, apparently. Yeah. yeah enjoy Good that. Good luck. Uh, so there's a lot of new moving and shaking going on here from the studios. But we should probably mention right up front that, of course, Tenet has been delayed again. We were right. Yeah. And we're sure this is making Christopher Nolan really fucking angry. He hates us. He wants that goddamn movie to be screened in theaters if it's the last thing he does. I'm going to get a shirt that says that has Tenet on the front and says, he hate me on the back. Yeah. Uh, at this point, Tenet has just been delayed indefinitely. They've got that movie on a string. and It's just, <laughs> just dang. Oh, yeah. You almost got it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Warner Brothers insists that a new release date will be announced as soon as possible. Uh, they've also confirmed that this movie will absolutely never be released straight to digital VOD. So it's just not coming out. Yeah. So, yeah, if the pandemic never ends, you're just not going to get to see Christopher Nolan's masterpiece, Tenet. It's going to be one of those legendary movies. Yeah. Like uh, like that uh, Orson Welles movie that came out on Netflix like two years ago. <laughs> They're like, been sitting in a canister for 45 years. Now, wait, wait Elliot. It? It, hold on. That's not exactly true. Because it turns out that the rest of the world has handled this whole coronavirus outbreak a hell of a lot better than how, the United States. How'd they do that? Did they like. What? Now, that doesn't matter. How, <laughs> shut what up. Did, what did they do different than America? No, you the shut The best up. country in the world. They did absolutely nothing different. And just because they're sending their kids back to school, that means we can do the same. Okay. Uh, since those countries have been able to flatten their curves and ultimately reduce the number of cases and deaths overall, they can have tenant as a treat. I like this. <laughs> They should screen all the new movies overseas. That might be what's happening here. Like, America, it's going to take a lot to motivate these people into just doing anything. Yeah. And I think... I think They took my tenor away! Taking away all of our movies and just turning, like, social media into, like, a spoiler hellscape where British people are just spoiling everything constantly. Mate. That is the kick in the pants that this country needs to start taking this virus more seriously. Might. You're going to love... You're going to love the twist. But you're going to love... You're going to love Tenet. Yeah. Like, at the end of the movie, he's with that. No! <laughs> Fine, I'll wear a mask! God damn it! I'll do anything! <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is uh, specifically going to be in Europe and, and maybe Asia, but per Variety, quote, Warner Brothers is reaching out to international exhibitors about a possible late August launch for Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Exhibitors in the UK, France, and Spain have been told by the studio to plan for an August 26th through 28th launch. Yes. The dates are not confirmed, though sources indicate that talks are positive. It's understood the studio is also aiming to release the film early in Asia, with exhibitors in the region expecting to receive a new date in the next few days. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> this is the best news hey, ever. Hey, Uncle Baker to see the movie. <laughs> I love I it. I want to see Tenet. So, yeah, spoilers be damned. Everyone in the world might get to see Tenet before we do, which is sad. Oh, it sucks. And it's hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Now, to quote another Warner Brothers blockbuster, we get what we fucking deserve. Oh, oh I love that. It's amazing. I mean, it's it sucks as a hoisted by our own petard. As a person that enjoys movies, but this is what we fucking deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Just play all the 
Let let the rest of the world just continue on as normal while yeah, yeah. we just stuck in the dark We're ages. Just, can, I really, can I just get a new movie, please, please, as a treat? No, <laughs> not unless you eat your vegetables, America. They're on iPhone 15 over there in Spain. Yeah, we just get nothing new. <laughs> yeah, I love. We that. should be held in fucking purgatory. Yeah. until this is figured out. This is good. We're, I like. This. We're grounded. Mm-hmm. We are grounded. Hollywood, you want to be a hero? This is how you, this is how this you, how you stop it. the virus. Yes. You take our movies away and you give it to the Hollywood, Europeans. technology, everything. Mm-hmm. Stop us. We must be stopped. Oh, my God. Oh, I but, love it. Uh, moving on now to other movies that were supposed to be released in 2020 and beyond. Uh, side note here, the films we're about to talk about could very well have the same fate <laughs> as Tenet. Yeah. Entertaining the rest of the world while we suffer here. Uh, so let's just go through this recently updated list from Vulture to see where they will fall after their most recent shakeups. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Avatar. The next four Avatar movies will debut every other December, beginning December 16th, 2022, with Avatar 2 delayed one year from December 17th, 2021. Yeah, so James Cameron is going to be long dead by the time all these movies are out. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, a Quiet Place t- uh, Part 2 uh, has moved from March 8th, 2020 to September 6th, 2020. And now it's April 23rd, 2021. God damn. Matt Reeves' Batman moved from June 25th, 2021 to October 1st, 2021. Uh, Black Widow, still in 2020 for now, but moved from May 11th to November 6th. Yeah, we'll see about Uh, that. Yes. (laughs) We'll see about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, That Candyman reboot, which looks great. Uh, Another movie that is still allegedly happening in 2020, though much like Black Widow and any others, we doubt it. (laughs) Uh, initially moved from June 12th, 2020 to September 25th, 2020, but is now scheduled for October 16th, 2020. What's cool about a lot of these is that uh, there's a few on here where I completely forgot that they would have already been out and we would have seen them already. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we're in purgatory and we fucking deserve it. Yep. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness moved from May 7th, 2021 to March 25th, 2022. Dungeons and Dragons, a movie that exists apparently, was yeah. moved from November 19th, 2021 to May 27th, 2022. Marvel's The Eternals has moved from November 6th, 2020 to February 12th, 2021. Fast and Furious 9 moved from May 22nd, 2020 to April 2nd, 2021. The Flash has moved from July 1st, 2022 to June 3rd, 2022, uh, unless it's just canceled because Ezra Miller j- he just punches people while he's in Iceland. Yeah, he's been... Apparently, stuff. people there do not like him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Forgot about that one. That was supposed to be out hey, by now. Yeah. <laughs> that was moved from July 10th, 2020 to March 5th, 2021. Godzilla vs. Kong has moved from November 2020 to May 21st, 2021. Halloween Kills moved from October 16th, 2020 to Friday, October 15th, 2021. Halloween Ends, uh, you know, it got moved a year as well. October 15th, 2021 to Friday the... Friday, October 14th, 2022. Friday the 14th. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jungle Cruise. Oh, that one, too. It yep, moved from July to 20, today. Yeah. July 24th, 2020 to July 30th, 2021. The Matrix 4 was supposed to come out May 21st, 2021, to, and it's now moved to April 1st, 2022. Minions Rise of Gru moved from July 3rd, 2020 to July 2nd, 2021. So many movies that would have already come out. This is weird. Yeah. Mission Impossible 7 moved from July 23rd, 2021 to November 19th, 2021. Mission Impossible 8 to move from August 5th, 2022 to November 4th, 2022. That live action Mulan, which was another movie that was supposed to welcome back theater goers after their diligent efforts in combating the virus. Uh, Mulan has just been moved completely off the calendar after going from March 27th of this year to July 24th of this year to August 21st of this year. Probably not the last we're going to hear about that one being it's, moved. They have it, they're like, you know what? We're not even going to say. We're not going to say when it comes out. How about that? Shazam 2 moved from April 1st, 2022 to November 4th, 2022. Star Wars, uh, well, everyone got their fucking wish. No, no more Star Wars. You're not getting a Star yeah. Wars until at least 2023, you ungrateful bastards. But at least we have Mandalorian. And whatever else comes out on Disney+. Plus. Although, a few of those shows have been moved around as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thor, Love, and Thunder moved from November 5th, 2021 to February 11th, 2022. Top Gun Maverick has moved uh, from, it should have already been out by now, June 24th, 2020 to December 23rd, 2020, just in time for Christmas. But nope, now you got to see it next summer, July 2nd, 2021. That Indiana Jones sequel has been moved back to 2022 when Harrison Ford will be 80 years old. 
Wow. But I still got it. Just don't get me near up an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> no heavy machinery for you, sir. No. Uh, Spider-Man's uh, live-action sequel, it's been moved back to December of 2021. Uh, Spider-Man, the animated Into the Spider-Verse sequel, has been moved back to October 2022. We're never going to see any of these movies. Nope. Because they're all going to keep getting pushed back, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Wonder Woman 1984, another one. Should have been out a month and a half ago. It's supposed to come out June 5th, 2020. Got moved to August 14th, 2020. Uh, apparently uh, still coming out October of this year, probably not going to happen. So, I mean, what's what's the first movie that's still on schedule to welcome us all back to theater? Hey guys, welcome back. Grab some popcorn and sit next to your friend without a mask on. Yeah. Well, it is, of course, the movie that everyone's dying to see, Marvel's The New Mutants, which still has an absolutely mind-boggling release date of August 28th, 2020. So, uh, just about one month from now, when surely the pandemic will be Far, far behind us. And yeah. it, it is funny that that one hasn't been re-delayed because that movie has been delayed, like, I think four separate times. It was filmed, like, five years ago. Yeah. Everyone that was in it is adults now. Yeah, it's weird because yeah. they, they were all teenagers in there. You see, you see like, production photos and you're like, Wait, they, they, did, they did, a, like, Comic-Con at Home panel thing and it was just like, hey, everyone, yeah. you're <laughs> excited to go see our new movie. Yeah. Uh, now, as far as new announcements for movies, we actually have some news after a solid few weeks of absolutely nothing because nothing's been happening. And we all knew it was coming fast, but a sequel to Ugh. Sonic the Hedgehog has officially been announced, and it will release in theaters on April 8th, 2022, barring uh, people not getting upset about the graphics one more time. I want to see... I, it, they need to put out the cut of the old one. Yeah, Complete release, old one. release the, 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 the bad cut. Yeah, I mean, tw April 8th, 2022 uh, doesn't actually seem that far away, considering how far back literally everything else has been pushed, including a bunch of films that have been fully completed. Just n never been seen, even though they are ready to screen. Yeah, they're they're in the chamber. <laughs> you ready to blow you can't our have it. You can't have it, America. Nope. You've been bad. You've been very bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, the new live-action Mortal Kombat movie, that one's apparently holding nothing back. Uh, during a recent interview with comicbook.com, Louis Tan plays the role of Johnny Cage in the upcoming film, alluded to the fact that this movie should be the all-out gore fest that... MK fans are hoping for. MK heads. He said, let me just say this. There were some days on set that I felt sick. I'm not kidding. They did not, they did not hold back. And adding to that was writer Greg Russo, who uh, attempted to temper the expectations slightly. He said, uh, I can say for sure that the fatalities that we're going to put into the film are from the game. We're not going to come up with some new things that we haven't seen before, but at the same time, if we're going to do it to use that device, we want to make sure that it's not just in there just to be in there and have that point to the story. So everything will always have that point to what's happening in the story, that it will feel awesome and badass, but it's going to play a role, you know? It's not just going to be in there just to be showy. In terms of the content, yeah, I mean, we're... I think there's always a thin line, you know? You don't want to be over the top, right? with your violence, and I don't know that that's really going to pit people off. I I'm not sure that's even necessary. So you want to be truthful, you, but you also don't want to be so ridiculous and gratuitous that you may turn people off in the wrong way. So I would just say that it's going to be faithful to the games, and it's going to earn its R rating. So a pretty big dis disparity there between I was literally vomiting on set because of how disgusting the fatalities were to, all right, don't get your hopes up. There are going to be fatalities. It's going to earn an R rating, but it's not going to be something that people are scrambling out of the theater, puking all over themselves at. Yeah, I mean, like, I can see the, like, OG Mortal Kombat fatalities, like, working in a movie. The, the new ones? The new ones, it's like, that's going to be so fucking dumb. The new ones are like, like, oh, he kicked his spine out the back of his head and then, like, cut off his arms and legs using the spine as a whip <laughs> and, and then, like, you know, stuck his foot inside of his own head and said, yeah. hey, you got a little foot in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's got to be a balance, right? Yeah, uh, as he's saying here. So, uh, yeah, barring any shakeups because of the pandemic, Mortal Kombat, it's still on track to release in January okay. uh, 2021. So, but hey, sports go. fans. Yeah. Are you tired of seeing cardboard cutouts in the stands during the games now that they've started back up here in the States? Baseball's back. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want the U.S. to take things a few steps further than other countries with their blow-up dolls and robots filling the seats. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're like us and you want absolutely none of that because it takes attention away from the game. And maybe we should just have to sit through some empty silent games for one season. It's until punishment. Until we, we learn our lesson. <laughs> I'm actually loving it because you can hear everything the players say out there. And they, they say a lot of curses. A lot. Yeah, you couldn't hear that before because the crowd a lot noise. Of, 
a lot of soccer, and there's a lot of a lot of Fuck. stuff, going on, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. There's like a, a bunch of people were complaining about like uh, there's like a Dodger game yesterday, and there's just like so many f words. Like they were. Th- this is what's been happening this whole time. You well, just couldn't hear it. It's better than I. I know for for a fact that the MLS started off with putting fake crowd noise in. Yeah. And fake chants, and people did not like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, there's a new experiment coming. Tell them about it. Yeah. Elliot. So um, sucks to be us. Kicks ass to be you, though, the person just begging for this, a fake yeah. crowd. Because Fox Sports is taking shit to the next level by adding an artificially living, breathing, moving, reacting virtual crowd to fill the stadiums during this Saturday's MLB game. And apparently, they're going to keep doing it unless we all come together to yell at them. Yeah. Per Variety, the Fox Corporation-owned outlet intends to fill the seats of Wrigley Field, Dodger Stadium, Nationals Park, and Petco Park with hundreds of virtual attendees, and will do the same at all the ballparks from which it broadcasts games over the next several weeks. Using digital technology, Fox Sports will fill seats with dozens of digital doppelgangers, all of whom can make movements that emulate what a crowd might look like from afar. The attendees can be tailored for each venue. Fox can change the colors of clothes, so a particular stadium might appear to be filled with home team fans. Producers can have sections of the Airzatz Ozenblage do a wave, says Zager, and can even remove crowd members if need be. Quote, if it's an 8-1 to game, the crowd can be thinned out late in the game, he explains. And there go the Giants mm. fans, because the Dodgers is, kicked ass last night. Yeah, which is like most regular season baseball games, especially if they're day games, are just... Pretty much empty. <laughs> yeah, just empty from the start. Yeah, yeah. No one's taken off work. For There's this. too many games. What, like 267? Well, not anymore. Well, not yeah. this season. But like I'm just saying, in a normal season, if you want, if you really want people to make make people feel like things are back to normal, yeah, just have half the seats be empty. But yeah, that sounds uh, a bit unsettling. Pretty dystopian to us, but whatever. It's just nice to have sports back and real sports. Yeah, those, those fucking CGI people—they can even do the wave. Yeah, they can do whatever they whatever they you can program. do. All sorts of crowd. Champs. I'm hoping that they do like some. You know, how you can do like uh, the. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not artificial reality, but augmented reality, mm-hmm. where like a, a fucking monster truck comes out of nowhere and just mows over a bunch of fans. <laughs> Or like a, a, yeah. a, a, a UFO crashes into the stands, there's blood everywhere. It. Everyone yeah. knows it's fake. So oh my god! It. The seventh inning stretch has been ruined. Mm-hmm. A giant box of Cracker Jacks has fallen on the crowd. Oh my god! Bump bump bump! Oh, the humanity. <laughs> and we're talking real sports here, though, people. Not those sissy sports of the past where players weren't running the risk of dying by playing them. Back then, they just you know ran the risk of life-altering injuries for our enjoyment. Now, each game is a nail biter for the fans and the players. The whole league. It could go down with just one outbreak. It's yeah. exciting. And excitement is not the only thing that's in the air this time. But no, really, it is actually great to have sports back. It's, yeah. It's nice. MLS is back. Uh, MLB is back. Football? Maybe not. Uh, basketball is back. Uh, and apparently the players are like, they're apparently saying that they can do much better uh, as far as like three-pointers and general scoring because the uh, the court has like this all blacked out LED screen instead yeah. of fans waving around. Yeah. So they say their depth perception is much better. They can focus better. Uh, but uh, MLS and basketball, they're in a bubble. Mm. MLB, they're flying around to everyone's own home stadiums. Yeah, it's it's uh, risky business. It's interesting. Uh, anyways, there was also an Xbox showcase this week. Uh, much like everyone else, not that impressive. It's just what you'd expect. It's like, oh, a new Halo. But the Halo, wow. I get it. They have to. They're they're pushing the limits of frame rate on a console, but mm-hmm. there's some comparison photos uh, from like previous Halos next to this one, and it looks pretty bad. But it's open world, baby. So oh, there's well, that's cool. I guess I that's that's the other thing is like they only showed campaign footage, apparently a bit more open world than the other ones. Everyone was just like, okay, we'll show us the multiplayer. What's new with multiplayer? Nah, I'm not gonna give you that. Fable, cool, I guess. I mean, they really didn't show anything except for a frog eating Tinkerbell. And uh, the other good thing was there was a new uh, there's a new expansion for Outer Worlds coming out good. Uh, in a couple months. So that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah. I'll definitely be playing that. Because yes. I like that game a lot. So not very exciting, but I mean anything's exciting at this point. There's really not a lot I'll going take on. Take anything. Yeah. But they shouldn't let the games come out here. They should release the games overseas. Yes. Sony and Xbox will... Don't doing... give Americans anything yeah, new. Exactly. We haven't earned it. Yes. No, in fact, we're, we're going to come back, take all of your Xbox Ones and PS4s. You're going to play Xbox 360. Yeah. Yeah. Until you learn Until to you behave. Learn I'm, yes. Anyways, that's it for this week's 
Uh, news dump? Is that the show we just did? Yeah. New, it's, uh, it's very hot in here. Sorry, everyone. Uh, it was news dump. Please please watch the most recent episode of Tech News Day. Have you seen Mark Zuckerberg looking like a fucking mime on a surfboard? Well, now's your chance. Uh, and and that, that expensive gamer chair that we might buy for tax purposes. <laughs> yeah, it's a write-off. Hey, I didn't want it. My accountant said I should get the gamer chair. <laughs> yeah. And also uh, the most recent Weekly Weird News, if you haven't seen it already. Check out both of those, and we'll be back uh, for a new episode of Weekly Weird News. And uh, we're going to be streaming something. Uh, I think we're gonna, we got some beta codes for Fall Guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so we might stream that this weekend or Monday or something. Check back for that. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.